Good morning. Hello, everyone. This past weekend, we did the first of our offline retreats. Um, and it was such a good experience. Mm. Not only did the format work, yes. it really, yes. um, it, it, it really uh, worked very well. But the subject matter was also very, very rich. Mm. And the conversation around and that. Feedback. It was mm. really nice. yeah. And we realized we only skimmed the surface. Uh, you can stay a lifetime with the material of, uh, of Mary Oliver, with Mary Oliver's poems, the images coming out. But we also realized and knew how helpful Mary is as a conversation partner on the spiritual journey. And also as a conversation partner in conversation with the Bible. Mm. But I think, um, just to make it more general, all art. Yes, I um, wanted to come yeah, to that. Maybe just touch on that before we... No, but yeah, I mean... I, I think just um, to in reading the Bible, to, to throw the net wider. Mm. And to also read poetry. To, to look at artworks, to look at movies, to, to read To read fiction. fiction. Because um, it informs life. And, and the Bible is about people's lives. Mm. So, um, uh, and, and I think in this case, um, we were working over the weekend with specifically the subject of prayer that Mary touches on quite a lot in, mm. her, in her poems. Mm. Um, and where she's very honest about it, where she says, I don't really know what it is. And I think often we sit with, with, um, with constructs that we we know we have to do something about it we know that it's important but we don't really understand it mm. and then this is so helpful mm. it, it 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 opens things up and i i always have the feeling of a very stuffed room mm. and then you open the window and there's fresh air coming in mm. and mary is such a a whiff of fresh mm. air mm. coming in uh, through that to help us when we get bogged down in our own concepts and definitions. Because if we work with very, very rigid definitions, mm. and it is sad to say, but when we are busy with the Bible, we often get stuck in our own and community at large's uh, uh, um, rigid definitions. Mm. We have these concepts and especially around prayer. Mm. Take that, I mean we can touch actually on any subject but let's take prayer where Mary helps us in that sense. Growing up we went to church and I, uh, I read my Bible and I grew up with a sense that to pray is to kneel at your bed and fold your hands and be quiet and say your prayer to God. In other words, there is a period where you are busy praying. Mm. And it was actually something that was informed by, by reading the Bible. Yes. And specifically uh, Paul. Yes, yes. Uh, and I mean, one has to be devoted I, I remember how I felt guilty if for some reason I was so tired at night and I didn't get to my prayer. Uh, how disappointed God must be. Mm. Uh, I didn't get to my prayer. Mm. Um, bad Christian. Bad Christian. Uh, so it adds to feelings of guilt and unworthiness and all of that. And, and failure. Yes. And then Paul comes and he doesn't help. Within my <laughs> construct, within yeah, my yeah, construct, yeah. because in uh, 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thess Thessalonians 5 verse 17, he comes and he says, pray all the time. <laughs> and I say, Paul, I'm struggling with that. With one prayer. With <laughs> one prayer in the evening. I, If I really want to good, I pray in the morning as well. But now you say I have to pray all the time. Yeah. 
So with my definition, my concept of what prayer is, my parents won't see the whites of my eye in the day <laughs> because I'll be busy praying constantly. You're such a good little boy. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, that is what the Bible is saying. Yeah. That is what Paul is yeah. saying. Um, and if I work with this literal definitions, mm. Mm. I get tangled up in all... Um, um, yeah, it's, it's mental all the sucks yes. and yeah, mental um, uh, whirlpools, really, yes. because, because it, it just doesn't make sense. How do you live your life? How do you, if that is what is expected of you, yes. that is what God wants of you. So there must be something that we are misunderstanding it. Exactly, exactly. Because merely on a practical level, what Paul is saying doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. So it must have a wider scope. Uh, Paul must have something more in mind. And gradually, through the mystical tradition and contemplative spirituality and reading and conversations, that widened and reading poems and mm. fiction and so on. Mm. And then Mary comes along and she touches a lot mm. on prayer. Mm. And she throws it open totally wide. Mm. Um, in her poem, Praying, she says, so we come to Mary and we say, Mary, I have a problem with prayer. And a lot of people have problems with prayer. Uh, there's a lot of guilt around prayer. Mm. Um, Mary, I have a problem with prayer. Can you help? And she says, yes, let's talk about Prayer. So she writes this poem, Praying by Mary Oliver. It doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention, then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest, but the doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. Goodness, mm. this is so rich. <laughs> and it touches on so many things, just in passing. Then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. Growing up, attending Bible uh, prayer sessions, uh, Bible studies and so on, the old people had these long prayers mm. with elaborate words, mm. um, which in a sense, it was, it was their piety, yes, their course. piety. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that that is the way we need to pray. Uh, to pray. Mm. So we come to Mary and we say, all right, Mary, let's talk about prayer. And she says, it doesn't have to be this blue iris. And you say, Mary, you Mary, stay Mary? on the subject, please. <laughs> stay on the subject. Uh, I, I would love for you to take off that thick volume from the library shelf where the old church fathers wrote long theses on what prayer is. Uh, so stay on the subject. Let's skip the blue iris. She says, it could be weeds in a vacant lot. Mary, you're not <laughs> listening to what I'm saying. She says, oh, or a few small stones. Uh, Mary says, pay attention. Yeah. Pay attention. Um, and Mary's message, and that we touched on over the weekend as well, isn't foreign to the biblical message. Mm. Mary doesn't come from wayward and out of the ballpark or what. She plays into the message, to the gospel message. She, she repeats what Jesus was saying to the people sitting around him. Look at the lilies of the field. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, pay attention. And he says, when when you pray, don't pray like these uh, deep religious people who stand on the corners and have these long to prayers be seen. and to be seen. Yeah. You don't have to be there. That. Yeah. Patch a few words together is what Jesus is saying. <laughs> yeah. So don't make it elaborate. Don't make it elaborate. And then, of course, this is not a contest. That's a whole subject on its own. But a doorway into thanks. Yes. So, and, and I'm thinking of that very short poem by Mary where she says, Instructions for life, mm. instruction for living a life. Mm. Pay attention. Be astonished, tell about it. Exactly. And it's exactly, exactly that as well. It's it's be astonished, be grateful. Um, tell God about it. Mm. Or tell others about it. Just just talk about it. Talk, talk about this what what where your attention led you to. Mm. 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 Yeah. So prayer and to pray constantly. Is to live in this beautiful world with its sorrow and its stress and everything. We're not denying that. But in this wonderful world where we are alive. With awareness. Awareness of the, the presence of the divine. Mm. Uh, infused in everything. Infused. Uh, what does she say in the summer day? Yeah, it's also so beautiful because that's also one thing that we touched on in the Afrikaans one is we often think we should have all the answers. Yes. In, specifically with something like prayer. We should know how to pray. We're Christians. We've been Christians all our lives. So we should know how to do this. Mm. But then we really don't. And Mary actually just says that all the time. And we don't always need to have the answers. Yeah. Like Rick says... Maybe we have to live into the answers. Maybe sometime in future we will we will grow into the answer. And have, we have to live the questions. And have patience with the questions. Yeah, have patience with the questions. So mm. she says in the summer day, I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed. How to stroll through the fields, which is what I've been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Mm. So, and, and that to me is, is so meaningful in terms of a prayer is that which you know how to do. To mm. appreciate your life, to appreciate what's around you. The way you pay attention. So you can be busy praying while standing in front of the stove and preparing this dish for yeah. the people you love. Paying attention to it, being astonished by the flavors and the colors and thinking where it came from. And Are you praying when you're turning a vessel on the wheel? For sure, I know how to do it. Yes. And I know and I enjoy doing it. In other words, it's like, what else should I do? Mm. In terms of praying then, um, I don't know exactly what a prayer is, but I do know how to throw a vessel. Mm. And that can be my prayer. Yes. That is my prayer. That is. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And then another thing that she also says, and it ties into what you were saying about all the beauties, is she says in an interview, the world didn't need to be so beautiful. Mm. To work. It didn't need to be so beautiful to mm. work, but it is. This and morning, what does it mean? This morning when we were washing dishes and you were dry, drying and that little bug. Came, yeah, the little ladybird. Yeah. Sat on the, on the, uh, the drying cloth. And it is so beautiful. Beautiful. It was almost bronze red. Yes. Yeah, it's just the most beautiful thing. Why is the world so beautiful? What is the meaning of it? And what should we make of all this beauty? And then, of course, the, the last part of that poem. Um, and a silence where another voice can speak. So if we live this life, we enter into a silence and an awe and an appreciation. 
a silence into which another voice may speak. Through our concepts and everything, this voice of God, of the divine, comes through and we hear it. Often we hear it on such a deep level, it's almost a bodily experience. Mm. Um, but, but it happens when we are open to our surroundings and our situation. Mm. And poetry works so well because it's, it's all that white space. Mm. Um, if you look at a poem on a page, there's a lot of white space. And uh, Eugene Peterson says you can walk around it and then it invites you to read me again, read me again, but also sit in those that white space for mm. that voice to... And I think that's where the astonishment comes in. Mm. And, um, what happens when that voice speaks? What, what, what are you experiencing mm. in that silence? Yeah. So may it be an adventurous week in terms of your prayer life. Uh, be at all and tell be, about it. And tell about <laughs> it. We would love to hear. Uh, <laughs> we love the feedback that we get and we are astonished as to all the places where our conversations, the recordings are being used and the, um, uh, the impact that it has and yeah. uh, how people play into that and respond to that. Mm, so, so thank grateful. you so much for that and have a lovely week. Keep well, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.